Philippines. Tonight, live at the Scully Theater, from the entertainment capital of the world in the heart of downtown Las Vegas, we present the Downtown Podcast. Starring your host, Dylan Jorgensen, Jillian Minter, Trey Talia Ferry, and music by yours truly, DJ Lenny Love Alfonso. Tonight's guest, Congresswoman Dina Titus. Yay! From dropyoursocks.com, Travis Gluckler. A musical performance by Sonia Sealinger. And now, ladies and gentlemen, let's give it up for the man who always vaccinates vaccinates before his first date, Woo! Mr. Trey Tyleberry! Yeah! Yeah! Yes, how's everyone doing? Yeah, yeah all right, everyone. Great, great crowd. Great <laughs> crowd tonight. Great crowd. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. How's it going, Lenny? How you doing today? How you good, doing? good. It's yeah. a good week, good week. Yeah, you got anything going on this week? Uh, this week, at a Love for Literacy Festival at the uh, West Las Vegas uh, Art Center. It's going to be a fun one. Oh, yeah? If you've got kids, bring them out this weekend. It's uh, Saturday, 9 to 3. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah. So, wait, what was it for again? It's for, for kids. Uh, What's li for kids? Literacy kids. Oh, okay. Yeah. So, uh, Dylan could be there. It, it, yeah, so it's of course, for Dylan. Of course, yeah. we're all invited. We're all invited. Good, good, good. All right. <laughs> Thank you guys for so much for being here. Uh, I hope you guys are pumped for these jokes. I practiced them in the shower, and uh, I, don't, I don't know what this means, but after I told the first joke, the water got cold. So, we'll see how it goes from there. We'll see how, we'll see how it goes from there. Yeah! So, yeah! Let's give it up for water heaters, yeah. right? Yeah. All right. Okay. Yeah. Sure. Great show. Okay. Um, but th this is weird. This is weird. Surveys have determined that the Washington Monument is 10 inches shorter than it was originally listed. Is that right? Yeah. So I guess everyone lies on their eHarmony profile. Oh. Oh. <laughs> uh, the, okay. The building didn't change height because of anything. It's just where you start measuring, said Drew Smith, chief surveyor. Uh, I think you know where I'm going to go with this one. So we're just going to leave as a family show. We got a congressman here. We're not going to go. We're not going to go there. We're going to move on. We'll move on. Yeah. All right. <laughs> okay. Well, this week on Monday, the Westminster Dog Show crowned Beagle Miss P as their best in show. Um, yeah. Give it up for Miss P, right? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, in her acceptance speech, Miss P said. Most importantly, I want to thank my trainer, Master P. <laughs> oh, old Master P joke. You guys remember him from the 90s? Yeah. That's great. That's great. Uh, no wonder she won Best in Show. She can talk. This is a talking dog. What? Right? Yeah. How many talking dogs do you know? Do you know any talking dogs? Uh, there's a, what is there? Goofy? Dog the Bounty Hunter? Right? Snoop Dogg? I don't know anyone else. Anyone else? Snoop Dogg's talking. Snoop Lion now. <laughs> Earlier this week, Yale School of Medicine published a report on how cannabis users experience the munchies due to the chemical release in the brain that increases their appetite. <clears throat> Yale, I'm sorry, I read the teleprompter wrong. That meant Jack in the Box. Oh, Jack in the Box. Oh, oh. oh. oh laughs. Pretty clap, pretty clap. It took six years to conduct the survey. Um, it would have taken shorter, but we had that whole situation with the Twinkies, and they were gone, so they had, that set them back a little bit. Do you remember when we didn't have Twinkies? That was bad. That was my nom. <laughs> OK, all right. Lastly, OK. Last Sunday was the 40th uh, anniversary of SNL. And they had, an SN they had an anniversary special, right? Did you guys see that? Great show, great show. Yeah, yeah. great. Uh, did you hear that Eddie Murphy declined to play Bill Cosby in one of the sketches? That was weird, huh? He said, you shouldn't knock a man while he's down. You shouldn't kick a man while he's down. But that's a noble thing for Eddie Murphy to say. I mean. Kicking a man while he's down, that's pretty bad. That's, that's kind of like drugging a woman before you lay her down, right? Oh. Oh. Family show, sorry about that. But it was good for Eddie Murphy to say that, right? Good, yeah. Thanks, thanks Dr. Doolittle, for that. All right, good. <laughs> great, all right. Well, ladies and gentlemen, we have a great show for you tonight. Stay where you are. We'll be right back. But first, let's hear it for our DJ, Lenny Love Alfonso. <laughs> Take a break and step out to the dazzling lights. Start where it all began. Try your luck on Fremont East. Listen to live music as you make your way down the street.
you'll collide and connect with amazing people. Later in the night, you'll find a variety of restaurants ready to satisfy any appetite or craving you may have. Pick any bar, lounge, or cafe. Have a craft cocktail while the kids go down the slide as you relax and unwind with your favorite drink. Explore the shops and galleries you'll find curated items just for you. You'll love downtown Las Vegas. Show the world. Visit us online at lovedtlv.vegas. is a big supporter of the podcast, so please give it up for Travis Gluckler from Drop Your Socks. Travis? Hey, thank What's you so up? much for being here. Yes, yes. Have a seat. Awesome. Oh, I think we, we have some socks hidden, hidden under here, right? They're actually cotton foot covers, but oh. if you want to call them socks, you can do that. Yeah, too. totally different. My apologies. They actually say it right there. Oh, foot, got it. Foot covers. It's my fault. I, I wasn't prepared. I didn't read it. All right. So you're always here at the podcast. We really appreciate it. You go, you have an alter ego, Doc Jones. Can you explain that to me because it's very confusing. People know, know you as both names. I think most people that know me call me Doc, but my mom would never call me Doc, so it's Travis. Um, <laughs> my wife as well will not call me Doc, but most people do. But yeah, it. Started in high school, it's been a long time, um, and it just kind of stuck, even like across the country when I moved, it like followed me. Yeah. It's weird. Got it. Okay. So you have this new organization that you started called Drop Your Socks, mm -hmm. and it's all about donating socks for the homeless. So talk to us about why you saw that as an important need and what your campaign's about. Well, um, I don't know if any of you guys have been in the military or you've been on the street. Um, but just in general, you have feet, right? Everybody has feet, and you need to cover them. You gotta keep them clean. So, but if you're in the military, you know that like you keep your feet like super in clean? check, right? I, I've never been in the military. Well, I mean, yes, you, yes. that's yes. the deal. Yeah. So if you know if you're on the street, like sometimes you don't change your socks for a long time, and that can be it's just a hygiene thing, you know, and mm -hmm. just really like especially if you walk everywhere you go, like so we take. Uh, for granted, having a car or a bike or, you know, some of these things. So um, it's just important. And um, something that's probably overlooked, right? Yeah. And socks are so simple. Like sometimes we think hygiene kits or like different things to give out to the homeless and we don't think about socks. But when you give like a homeless person a pair of socks, especially like fresh ones, we don't want your old socks, by the way. Oh, don't like noted. wash them and then drop them off. <laughs> noted. Like, <laughs> bring new, new socks, <laughs> new cotton foot covers only. Um, <laughs> So yeah, let's. So what? What? So that motivated you to start it. So what do you guys do? Um, basically, we have drop locations around downtown. Uh, we team up with different corporations that want to. Maybe their sales team wants to have a competition on who can like donate the most socks. Um, we do stuff like that, and then we collect them. And twice a month, we go out and pass them out. Um, we've been focusing on downtown, closer to like Fremont and 15th Street. If you guys are familiar with. Fremont East, you know that the farther you go down Fremont, it gets uh, worse and worse. The sock need is higher um, and higher. The sock need is higher. Yes. <laughs> there is a, a demand, and we need you to fill the supply. Yeah. So, okay. Um, so next yeah. week at the podcast, we're actually going to have a bin, and we're going to be collecting mm -hmm. only cotton foot covers or socks, or how picky are we with this? Um, Whatever people want to bring? White or black Cotton crew socks are usually the best. I guess you could do ankle socks if you feel like that. You can do that. Um, I mean, you can find a 10 pack of socks for like eight bucks. Yeah, and, it's um, an easy donation for sure. Yeah. And if you want, if some people don't want to go to the store, like that's too much work for you and stuff like that. Um, all you lazy, not you, but <laughs> these lazy people out here. <laughs> if, if you guys want, would rather just donate money and we go we go and buy socks like every other week and um we've actually had a lot of like financial donations just like oh go buy socks and we do that too so 
Okay, cool. So um, next week we'll be doing that. We'll be taking socks. Bring socks. We'll always take people's money, right? Yeah. We'll do that too. If you want to come in, I would suggest like if you guys want to throw socks at the hosts, um, <laughs> kind of when they're not looking. I, th um, I think that's a, that's a cool little that tactic. Be, no, and I think whoever brings the limits? most socks, we could do some free drinks and stuff like that. So yeah. definitely, right? <laughs> I know my audience here. So. Yeah. Okay, cool. She just so diverted from the throwing socks <laughs> thing. Convenient, wasn't it? Yeah. So where can people find you online? Uh, dropyoursocks.com, real easy to remember. Um, and we have actually a couple of drop locations uh, in downtown. Uh, we're at Grassroots, uh, which is the smoothie shop down the street. We're at uh, Fancy Feet at the Container Park. So those are some okay. other drop locations. And All right, great. Well, thank you so much for being here. And I cool. hope to see everyone next week with their socks or money. Right? Yeah. All right. This is Bonnie with My Vagabond Soul, and we want to know, what is your dream and how are you chasing it? Follow us as we interview dreamers of all walks of life, entrepreneurs, musicians, artists, and much more. Hear more about this interview with Craw and the Salvation Highway Band. Well, songwriting and playing music is my passion. I want to inspire others that come from struggle to chase their dreams and one day make it become a reality. For this interview with My Vagabond Soul co-founder and artist, Kat Ford. I started writing children's books to encourage kids of all ages to chase their dreams. We believe in chasing our dreams and want to inspire you. So visit us at myvagabondsoul.com, like us on Facebook, and follow us on Instagram and Twitter. Because now that you know your dream, it's time to start chasing it. Good, good energy. Well, you guys are going to enjoy this next interview because we actually have a congresswoman right here from District 1 where we film our show coming to talk with us. So please put your hands together for Dina Titus. Come on out. Thank you. Yeah, thank, thank you, you so much. Oh, we, we hug around here. All That's right, good. Thank you. But those political Sit handshakes are good. Yeah, have a seat. Okay. All right. Well, first off, thank you so much for coming down and checking out our little show that we do down here. Well, it's my pleasure. Thank you for having me. Yeah. Well, okay. So first off, a lot of people who have moved downtown, like we've come because there's all this opportunity that uh, a whole bunch of different reasons have kind of come together for, right? But there's all sorts of uh, tech scene and a fashion scene and, and things growing. And what are like the things that we should know? Because at least from my point of view, I don't know a ton about the history of Las Vegas. I don't know a lot outside of this downtown scene. But what's going on, and what do you think people should be aware of, especially these entrepreneurs and small business owners? Well, I love representing downtown. My district goes Didn't from the airport to Cashman Field, and we say if it's happening, it's happening downtown. It used to be the strip. Yeah. yeah. Cool. We, we know how to write them up. Uh, yeah. We have a hashtag that's only in District 1. And so here in downtown, you have the best of the old and the new. You've got some of the historic things like El Cortez, and then you've got cutting edge things like Zappos. I think you have the best of both worlds. Yeah, you know, I checked out the hashtag when you recommended it, and it was cool to see everything that was happening. So that's a great, so tell me more about this hashtag and what you're using Well, I like to visit a lot of the local businesses, not the chains, but the bars and the restaurants and Smalls. the bars and the restaurants. <laughs> And the that, are, that are locally owned, and we always, uh, we always tweet it out oh, and yeah. encourage people to do the same. And we ask other people, when they do exciting things in the district, to link us with that hashtag. Yeah, and you'll be great. surprised what people do in this district. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Nothing surprises me about this district. <laughs> but uh, so have you been down to the container park and walked through all of the different of course, uh, of places I've that are going on down there? I've toured it. Our office is only about three blocks away. So oh, uh, oh, we're down you... here all the time. Nice. We have bicycles in our office where we ride around the bicycles. So yeah, we love it. Okay, all right. So it's legit. You're you're downtown all the time. That's where your offices are. Yep. You know the Container Park, and you've now made it to our TV show, which is great. I know. Yeah. I, I feel like little yeah. thing. So. Yeah, this is it. <laughs> Okay. Yes. Yeah, awesome. Okay. So when we were talking before, you had all sorts of interesting things. You were talking about uh, 
uh, like with the roads that were coming on, the spaghetti bowl or something. But uh, just talk about some of these interesting things that I don't think everybody's aware of. Well, if you think about what all is downtown, besides the exciting corridor that's the kind of glitter gulch, you've got the Smith Center, uh, you've got the Rubo Medical Center, you've mm -hmm. got uh, the Neon Museum, I don't know, maybe the Mob Museum, all kind of things that are happening here culturally, economically, and socially. So uh, we want to be sure that it continues to flourish. And so any way we can encourage business down here, we want to do it. And one way is transportation. If you can't get down here, then you can't enjoy what it has to offer. And what's happening is they're reconfiguring the spaghetti bowl. That's called Project Neon, appropriately enough. But it's been described by RTC as going to be three years of hell. Oh. So just get ready. So you want to walk, <laughs> ride your bicycle, you want to stay off of that part of the highway. But when it's over, you're when anticipating over, a much better be connection right. downtown. And exactly. that'll be, will that include anything besides just changing the roads? Like, is there more? Uh, public transportation coming or well, anything to know about it? Yeah, we uh, had a meeting with RTC today to talk about how we can incorporate public transportation. And we'd like to see the whole Maryland corridor redone so that you can connect the Huntridge Theater to the airport and rehabilitate all of those areas because, you know, downtown can grow a little bit with some of those neighborhoods uh, that are surrounding us because there's not a lot of places to live downtown. We've got to rejuvenate the, the housing yeah. around here as well. Okay, so a lot of times it's like you come downtown and um, if you've only been here a few years, you're not quite sure how different it was. But could you give us a right. little bit of perspective? Because um, I guess things change so fast and when you're kind of in the moment, you don't see it. But like, how True. is downtown different from 10, 5, 10 years ago? Well, I came in 1977 to teach at no, UNLV. Oh, okay. <laughs> That's before yeah. you were born. Uh, yes, uh, so, you know, me fans out there. So, <laughs> so uh, I've seen a lot of changes. I've seen it up and I've seen it down. Uh, we saw when the Golden Nugget got rehabilitated and that seemed like that was going to bring some folks downtown. Then it kind of, you know, kind of went downhill. And then when the recession hit, it was really hard downtown. But now, when, since uh, Zappos has come in, the city has some redevelopment money. You've got new restaurants coming in. More folks are here. Yeah. The people who are kind of responsible for keeping you safe when you come downtown. First Friday is part of this whole scene. Yeah. Uh, life is beautiful. Oh, life is beautiful. It's great. Yeah. Is we love all that. I think it's working. I think it's yeah. taking. You know, it's also interesting, a lot of international tourists like to come downtown as opposed to the Strip uh -huh. because it's kind of the scene that they enjoy at home, whether it's sidewalk cafes or being able to walk. And it's a little cutting edge. Uh, I would say funky, but that dates me for using that term. <laughs> no, it's retro. Uh, it's coming back around. Oh, you're, yeah. you're on top of it this time. You yeah, keep something around long enough, it comes back yeah. in style. You know, this retro clothes, that's just old stuff you've right. had in the you're closet Right, you're ahead of the fashion. Time. It's yeah. true. That's good. Well, a lot of our audience is in the Philippines right now, so all of Southeast Asia is where we are. So, huge in the Philippines. That's good. We'll get them out here. Um, okay, so let's jump over to, I want to jump to our social media booth and uh, see, we know we had asked some audience members if they had any questions, but Kyle, I just want to check in with you. Is there anything um, we should be talking to the Congresswoman about? Yeah, uh, Meredith on Twitter. Okay, what are you working on that will help end veteran homelessness right. in Las Vegas? Well, I serve on the Veterans Committee in Congress, and uh, veterans homelessness is a big issue. And as the population grows here in southern Nevada, you know, we're winding down some wars, more people are getting out of service. They're coming here because, well, the weather is warm and opportunities are great. But you also have more homeless. We've tried to count the homeless veterans. That's difficult in itself. But more programs that are aimed at mental health, drug abuse, and some kind of job training all will help people get off the streets and into a better transition to civilian life. Okay, and you're trying to make that happen, all, of, all those different elements? That's that a real priority. Plans. We're working with the VA and with veterans organizations to try to find those veterans and help them. And you'd be surprised how many women veterans are homeless who are in shelters or living in cars with young children, and they're often the hidden veterans, so we don't want to forget them oh, that's either. That's interesting, yeah. Probably didn't account for that. Okay, so tell me, um, uh, do you just have a great story from downtown? Like, is there a place that you can say, like, you had something really fun happen or... Well, I do have good? a great story. I'm glad you asked that. Sure. Uh, <laughs> this is not preset. Uh, I don't know no, what the story no, is. True. Yeah, that's I honestly true. don't. Well, in 1979, my husband and I, he teaches history at UNLV, got married downtown. Oh. And we went, just the two of us, my sister and a friend, chapel, huh? to... Uh, no, we didn't go to a oh, wedding okay. chapel, but we went to just kind of like the commissariat of 
marriages. Okay. And the guys who married us was sitting in there drinking scotch out of a coffee cup. <laughs> and he kept Everybody's saying, he kept saying, marriage is a sober occasion. <laughs> <laughs> Tom was laughing. I was crying, thinking, oh, my mother's not going to like this. But then we had 50 cent Corvoisiers uh, at the Union Plaza oh. and went to the old El Sombrero before it's new version of this. So that was 1979. So I've been coming down here a long time. That is awesome. Yeah, all right. Well, I think that's all the time we have. But that's I want it? to say, yeah. Well, will you invite me to it. come back? Yeah, you were always invited to Thank come you. back. Thank you all very right. much. Thank I appreciate you. it. And good. All right. Thank you. Appreciate it. The internet, the world's most amazing tool to stare at adorable cats like all day. But it doesn't have to be that way, really. Tracky helps you connect, collaborate, and get stuff done. It's a social way to organize your personal and professional life. Inspire the people you work with. And inspire yourself to enjoy more of life's little things. And when the work is done, Tracky helps you plan and play. Gather your friends, have some fun, and make sure your plans are awesome. Fun, easy. Nobody needs to worry about bears this time around. A long day and a fun night deserve the thwack of a high five. Welcome to Tracky, the tool where everything and everyone in your life works together in harmony. Connect, collaborate, done. Our guest is a singer, songwriter, and photographer who serenades at open mics around town. Please put your hands together for Sonia Sillinger. Hello. Thank you, thank you. So my name is Sonia, and I'll be playing you an original tune. Um, have you ever encountered a person from far away and just thought, geez, that person? You're like, I want to talk to them. So you go up to them, and you start a conversation, and none of the words come out in English or any type of language that you understand. Yeah, so this is about that. <laughs> Trying to be prophetic For my attempts at pathetic Against your poetics You got me Tongue-tied And you're so damn nice And you're so damn polite I can't even fight Against the feeling you ignite Inside of me Do you know you got me so tongue-tied, tongue-tied, tied inside. Oh, tongue-tied, tongue-tied, tied inside. Oh. Mm -hmm. So I walk down the street. And I get a bite to eat And I try not to think About what you do to me But it creeps in ever so softly Do you know you got me so Tongue-tied, tongue-tied, tied Inside, oh Tongue-tied, tongue-tied, tied Inside Tongue 
tongue tied, tied inside. Oh, oh, oh. Wow. Wow, that was amazing. That was great. That was so great, everyone. Ladies and gentlemen, that was amazing. Yeah. Well, that's our show. We want to thank, we want to thank again all of our guests, Travis Gluckler, uh, Dina Titus, and of course, Sonia Sillinger. So let's, uh, let's, um, Another round of applause one more time, guys. That's Thank great. You. Yeah. All right. Uh, be sure to follow us on Facebook and Instagram at Downtown Podcast. We will see you next week. Have a great night, everyone. Bye, Philippines. Bye, Philippines. I'm half Filipino, too. I'm not. <laughs> <laughs>